z druhého dňa Globseku. Pri ďalšom rozhovore máme tu ďalšieho hostia. A tým hostom je bývalý e, veliteľ e, francúzského vojenského letectva a bývalý veliteľ pre transformáciu NATO, generál Denis Mercier. Myslím, že no. Welcome. Thank you. Uh, my first question will be, of course, concerning, since you are a fighter pilot and the former, former uh, chief of the French Air Force, will the F-16, the American F-16s make really a difference in Ukraine? Uh, in fact, uh, if we use uh, uh, air power, it can make a difference uh, Uh, with a few conditions, but the difference is uh, the air power is very fast, so you can intervene uh, very quickly in many many different places, almost at the same time, and uh, it gives you uh, uh, new courses of action uh, with a huge agility. This is uh, really what is inherent to the uh, to the air power. Uh, the thing is uh, to use it uh, efficiently. First, we have the air superiority, which the Ukrainians have in their own territory. Mm -hmm. And the second thing is, uh, the aircraft itself is nothing. This is mm -hmm. the aircraft and uh, how it is integrated in the command and control structure in order mm -hmm. to make it uh, really effective. And uh, probably uh, this is not that uh, much in place in mm -hmm. Ukraine and they will have to learn with that in mm -hmm. order to, to, uh, to take the most out of it. But mm -hmm. air power can, can, mm -hmm. uh, can be a game changer if it's used correctly. So I understand that this is a new element also to the Ukrainian defense, yeah, so they yeah. have to learn it, how to use yeah, it properly. Yeah. Exactly. And in it, itself, it will not solve the problem, but, uh, mm -hmm. but air power plus everything they do uh, mm -hmm. uh, is, uh, is some, uh, that, that adds uh, new capabilities, new courses of action, and I think could be mm -hmm. very effective. What do you think about the new weapons the Ukrainians are developing now? Um, it's, let's say it's very impressive. Mm -hmm. and. Uh, There are many of them, but uh, I'm thinking about, uh, for instance, drones. Mm -hmm. And uh, there is a huge uh, uh, use of uh, drone warfare, which, uh, which shows that uh, uh, drones, any kind of drones, from the very uh, small one to the bigger one, mm -hmm. uh, to even the missiles, uh, uh, this, uh, this is uh, another game changer. And uh, especially because uh, they, uh, they learn a lot how to use it. Uh, and uh, how to uh, swarm them, how to uh, uh, use them, how to uh, uh, link them to, uh, uh, to, many different, uh, to many different sensors. Mm -hmm. and, uh, but uh, again, the drone in itself is, uh, is nothing. This is, uh, this is uh, how, you, uh, how you use uh, in order to uh, deliver the right effect uh, mm -hmm. on the ground. Mm -hmm. And uh, what I really appreciate, and uh, I'm very impressed with what the Ukraine are doing, is This is not drones or new weapons they are, uh, they are using. They really, they really look at uh, what are the needs on the ground and they have the specialized, uh, mm -hmm. specialized units uh, to make a very short uh, operational experimentation. Mm -hmm. And then they organize the battlefield and these new, uh, new assets in order to deliver the right effect on the ground. And that's very impressive because this is very short. Mm -hmm. I, I think that we will have a, to learn a lot from that. And behind the drones, uh, there is uh, all this organization and, uh, and other things such as uh, the use of, the, of space and mm -hmm. especially uh, they, uh, they have a very distributed command and control system, which, uh, which, is, which is impressive using Starlings and uh, using, uh, using uh, uh, yeah. many things. They are jammed now by the Russians, but they learn how to counter jams, especially using artificial intelligence, which is becoming more and more important in this battlefield. Mm -hmm. So, uh, uh, so this, uh, the, um, the, the thing, I, uh, because they are at war, they have no time to get the lessons learned, to develop the concept, the doctrine, and everything, and we should help them to do that. Mm -hmm. It's beneficial for us, sure. uh, all yeah. of our countries, and it's going to be beneficial for them mm -hmm. too. So. Setting aside the, the most terrible part of this war is, of course, the, the, the body count and the, and the yeah. loss of blood or mm -hmm. loss of life. Yes. Is this Ukrainian war actually showing us how the future warfare should, will look like? And is it something we really can learn from how to react quickly, what to do and how mm -hmm. to do it? Uh, it's difficult to answer that because uh, the, the next conflict will be different. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and today, uh, still, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the combats are uh, over the Ukrainian territory, which makes it more simple. Uh, uh, but, uh, but we can learn, as I mentioned, a lot from what they are doing, Take, uh, keeping in mind that uh, the next conflict will be different. So we should, we should not try to define 
uh, our forces just uh, in accordance with what we see in Ukraine. But uh, uh, again, looking at uh, distributed control, uh, command and control, uh, uh, use of drones, you have uh, artificial intelligence, uh, the ways they embrace innovation and everything, we can learn a lot from that and integrate that in, uh, in, uh, in, the in, uh, in, the, in the planning for the future together with, uh, with, uh, with other elements. But uh, we see in Ukraine that uh, some of the um, uh, traditional capacities uh, that uh, we have developed for years, tanks, uh, big ships and everything, they are uh, very vulnerable and we will have to take that into account uh, in order to, to mm -hmm. defend better these assets. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and that, that can put uh, our vision of the future for the military capabilities uh, in question in order to review uh, how we have uh, programmed them, how we will defend them, how we will use them. And for that, this is very interesting to see the lesson from, uh, yeah. from this conflict. So not to make the mistake of Marshall but then to building the marginal line. Because yeah, exactly. Uh, yeah, e exactly. <laughs> we, we, in our countries, we have been so far very traditional in our thinking. And this conflict uh, shows that uh, there are some breakthroughs we need to take into account mm -hmm. uh, in order to prepare the future. Okay, uh, how does, in light of this, what we just spoke about, how does it help NATO that it has uh, fresh new two members who were, until this time, on their own? They were not completely, of course, but, but nevertheless, they really had to take care about their defense by themselves. I mean, Sweden and Finland. How this does help mm -hmm. NATO? What, what can we learn from them? What we gain from them? Uh, in fact, uh, Finland and Sweden have been uh, what we call the uh, enhanced opportunity partners. So they, they were more partners than some of the partners. Almost members. Uh, yeah. Almost yeah. members, yeah. Uh, members yeah. Uh, exactly. Uh, but it's good to have them uh, in NATO. They have uh, huge capacities. Uh, including in the industry, especially in Sweden. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's, uh, that's very interesting to see that uh, we uh, reinforce the cohesion of NATO. Uh, the, uh, the northern part of NATO is an area which is uh, very interesting to see with the opening of new sea lines of communication because of the global warming yeah. and everything. So these countries we, uh, will play a, mm -hmm. uh, prob probably a, a key role in, uh, in, in this area and in the uh, military capacity they, uh, they, uh, they, they can provide. And uh, there is a general coherence, and at least what the Ukrainian, besides uh, the thousands of people killed, uh, the, uh, this, uh, this conflict has really uh, reinforced, I believe, the, uh, the cohesion of NATO and, uh, uh, and the vision NATO can build in the future. Mm -hmm. And especially in this vision, we may have had the tendency in the past to question after the uh, fall of the Berlin Wall and everything to say, do we still need NATO and everything? Mm -hmm. I mean, that, that, that means that we, uh, we, we should never ask this question. Uh, and we have, uh, uh, when, we ha when we are in a in more uh, peace, uh, peacetime uh, yeah. uh, environment, we, uh, we should take this opportunity to rethink what we do, but, but be sure that uh, mm -hmm. we need to stay together and to stand together in order to prepare uh, to, be, to defend our countries, our democracies, yeah. and that's, uh, that's what's important. Mm -hmm. And I think this conflict has demonstrated that. There might be some kind of fatigue in our countries, but we should keep in mind that we must continue to build our defense mm -hmm. and our resilience, in yeah. fact. Mm -hmm. Yeah, true. Uh, Thinking, uh, thinking about the coherence of NATO, what can states like Hungary, and I'm sorry to say also Slovakia at this time, how can they impact the coherence and the cooperation in NATO? Is there a real threat that the capability of NATO for action is diminished by, by, such, by such governments? Let's not say states because it's not the whole state, but the governments who are now there in, in seed. Yeah, this is an interesting question. And behind the question, this is not the question of this country. This is a question of the Russian propaganda. Mm -hmm. And the Russian propaganda tries to, uh, uh, to, uh, 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 to harm uh, our unity. And, mm -hmm. uh, and they use sometimes some countries, they use some parties in other countries, and they use people. And, mm -hmm. and, they, and, and they will continue to try to destabilize our countries. Mm -hmm. uh, the value, again, of an international organization such as NATO is that uh, if, we, if we had not this organization, mm -hmm. we would deal probably bilaterally, trilaterally, it would be very difficult. Here, we can have this discussion, 
not easy discussion, but at the political level, at the military level, all together. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and that means that uh, we are still working on this unity and we have a forum where we can really discuss it. Mm -hmm. And this is really the value of it. Today, uh, if some of the countries were out of NATO, it would be much more difficult. That's and this is, uh, and sure. this, is, this is really another value of it. It will never be easy. There are always political questions. We had political questions with Turkey and everything. But, but, but this is good because uh, this international organization brings uh, uh, mm -hmm. all these countries together. And, uh, and, we, and we continue to discuss and we will continue to bring, uh, to, to build our unity, even if we, it will never be granted and uh, it will be again harmed by, uh, by Russian influence and uh, maybe others. But, but what we have a forum to, uh, to, to discuss it, which is great, mm -hmm. which is great. We, if it did not exist, we should have to invent it. <laughs> yeah, sure. I completely <laughs> agree, of course. Uh, maybe the last question. Uh, there are different opinions, also we spoke to some analysts also in Slovakia, about when is the time that Ukraine could be a member of NATO of some sort. What is your opinion on that? Um, my opinion is uh, it's good that uh, we continue to uh, let the door open. Uh, today with the war it's, uh, it's probably more difficult. So, uh, it's, uh, it's very difficult to have a crystal ball where we say this is the right time and everything, but we should, uh, we should continue to uh, look at uh, what are the conditions to be a NATO member. Mm -hmm. But maybe before NATO, uh, could be a European member, mm -hmm. uh, because the uh, European Union has uh, other, uh, other values, and uh, I think this is always a, a combination uh, of, uh, of everything. I, uh, I believe that uh, if uh, if tomorrow this is an if and this is yeah. If, yeah, fiction, sure, let's say, yeah, yeah. but uh, but uh, but if tomorrow uh, Ukraine is part of the uh, European Union mm -hmm. and we tell the people uh, the Russian uh, population in Crimea uh, you are in Ukraine, but because uh, you are not in the free Ukraine, uh, you will not have a European passport. Mm -hmm. They could, okay. they could speak <laughs> about it. <laughs> okay, so maybe and, uh, this is a ways, ways Yeah, exactly, now, exactly. And it's important to keep the door open in NATO, and and we will find the, the right uh, the right time to do that. The right time to do that is not is not today. Mm -hmm. Obviously, uh, these kind of things uh, may uh, be discussed with Russia if we are in a position where uh, we are in a peacetime, which we are, and we are far from that. Yeah, so yeah. so mm -hmm. uh, we, we we will see, but. You know, sometimes the history has shown us that uh, uh, we can speed up processes or not. It mm -hmm. really depends uh, depend on the situation. Okay. Mr. Jean-Marie, merci beaucoup. Yeah. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Thank you.